Greetings and salutations to you all, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are well. My name is Kluger, and today I bring you another build guide for Grim Dawn. It's been a little while, I know. These things do take time, but good things come to those who wait, I think. Something like that. Anyway, <laughs> let's get into it. Today we're looking at the Chthonic Necromancer, which is my <coughs> fancy way of naming a pet mancer, essentially. It, there is necromatic themes in the build, that is for sure. Um, it's not fundamentally different, but it's a definitely a different approach to building a character than what I've done in the past, uh, because it was the roleplay strat, as coined by my good buddy, uh, the roleplay gamer. Uh, essentially, I aimed for a roleplay thing first, rather than a min-max approach to a build. And I found that to be really, really, really fun and different, um, and kept me interested, that's for damn sure. Um, it's it's not a bad thing, disclaimer, it's totally not a bad thing to do a min-max build, and I do that all the time, and many action RPG players do. Um, but to change it up and to focus more on the role-playing side than the action min-max side was a really fun and different approach, and something I'm probably going to explore a lot more uh, further down the track. Uh, briefly, just to note, it was inspired initially by the Raise the Dead skill, uh, which is a devotion uh, constellation uh, on enemy death. Thingamabob, that happens. Uh, the Revenant constellation from memory. I'm not looking at things right now, so. <laughs> and I thought that would be a really cool, fun thing to do, but uh, I could never figure it out. So it was sat on the back of my mind for a couple of months because you need to be doing a pet mancer build that can also kill stuff in order to summon these skeletons. So that, that was the battle that I was facing for for many months. But then some other bits of gear came uh, came my way as I was you know grinding other characters. And then this idea started to form in my head of you know, this uh, character that does raise the dead but also has certain chthonic powers which allows us to summon an even greater army of minions to do our bidding. So I will touch on that gear of course later down the track in the video. Uh, but it's really, really, really fun. It's not like your typical pet mancer sort of thing, uh, where you are just straight standing there and letting pets do all the work. It's a quite an active build insofar as that you're killing stuff to summon pets, as well as you're support, um, supporting your permanently summoned pets, um, doing a decent amount of damage, and doing some debuffs as well um, to help with the killing of enemies and the like. I think that's all I should mention for now, um, but yeah, it's a, it's a surprisingly effective build. I didn't go into uh, this build expecting the world, I didn't expect like super duper min max ultimate uh, viability right down to the very end of the game, but as it turns out, it's pretty damn strong. It's it's steamrolled through Elite, including Log Horian and all that extra stuff really, really easily, and I have high hopes that it could get deep into ultimate, if not complete all ultimate content. So. Uh, without further ado, we will hop over to the skill selection segment. Alrighty, so let's take a gander at the skill selection for the build. As you can see, I've got the Occultist Mastery up first, so let's take a step through that. We'll start top down as I usually do. Um, I've got Saleil's Witchfire on max 12 out of 12, and plus skills are buffing that further through to 15. Um, just, of course, sort of really good damage source to help us with murdering things and summoning extra minions. At the moment, just one point into Consecrated Blade, um, which you could put 3 out of 3. To be quite honest, I kind of forgot this skill was there at a capacity of more than 1 out of 1. It, it could be worth putting more points in there, but that's a bit of a take it or leave it sort of thing. Um, one point into second right, just for that extra vitality and a bit of chaos damage. Um, this is one where you can put more points into it as, as you feel the need to, if you're feeling like you're not putting out enough damage. Or, of course, the vitality resistance there is kind of handy as well. So, worth consideration, sort of probably later game, um, once you've sort of uh, achieved this core of the build, you could put more points in there if you so wish. Similarly with Possession, you could most certainly put more points in there. I fully intend to get that to at least sort of 6 out of 12, if not more, um, because it aids our main damage source, which is Chaos, uh, as well as giving us damage absorption and some other good stuff, which helps keep us alive. So, uh, really, really handy uh, skill to pick up, which I never initially planned to do so, actually. Uh, but once I reached max for occultist i thought that could be really helpful um and of course as you can see we've got plus skills from our gear uh, which help that along which makes it makes the investment more worth it uh blood of drig i've got an eight out of 16 uh, which 
is probably worth putting more points into, if not maxing, as you progress further through the game. Uh, our main healing source for us and all our pets, and as you have lots of pets floating around, this is a really imperative skill to help them along. One point into Aspect of the Guardian. Uh, the Poison and Acid Resistance is kind of nice to have, and those little damage boosts are pretty helpful. This is a... One point is handy, you can take it or leave it, but more points if you're feeling the need to, especially if you're lacking in uh, Poison and Acid Resistance, that's super helpful. Um, but yeah, that's another one that you can kind of take by feel. Now, one point into Summon Familiar, which is the Raven. Not worth putting more points in that. Some of you may even feel you can skip the Raven altogether. I like having it there as an extra minion to just cause some more distraction, especially for the Lightning Strike skill, which does stun enemies. Not, the damage is sort of meh. You don't need to worry about that so much, but the stun can be helpful. Similarly, Mend Flesh, which I've got one point in. 3% plus 75 doesn't sound like a lot, but 3% could be just enough to help you stay alive if you're in a real pinch, so... I like having him there, it's my personal preference, but this is one where if you would rather spend the three points elsewhere, you probably could get away with it. Um, we'll talk about Hellhound next. Summon Hellhound is at a full 16 from 16, um, with plus skills on it as well. Our main tank and probably our main damage source, all things considered, um, obviously really awesome to have. And then 12 out of 12 on Hellfire, uh, which is um, Hellhound's passive buff. Uh, which gives us plus fire damage, plus chaos damage, plus burn damage, and flat chaos damage as well. Uh, and this buff, of course, affects us and all the other minions. So I've chosen that specifically because it helps all enemy. Uh, sorry, all of us. That is so me, the player, or you, the player character, for that matter, as well as all the extra minions that come trucking along. So really, really helpful skill. Um, you'll note I haven't got anything into Ember Claw or Infernal Breath. Um, Having to spread the skills out a little bit more to help us, the player character, kill things more effectively. So leaving those um, skills out and um, enable us to do so. They're not. You could play around with putting extra points in there. These are kind of controversial skills because the animations can take a little while to trigger and they're not necessarily that effective. Um, maybe Ember Claw for the um, generation of additional threat could be helpful, but I'm, I've gotten to this point just fine um, without any need for them. And finally, Bonds of Bismil and Manipulation. This is another one I wasn't sure about taking, but as I progress further through the game, the gear that we have on offer makes it so you get a heap of plus skills, um, which means minimal investment into uh, each of the you know, base skills, as it were. So I've only got one point into each of Bonds of Bismil and Manipulation, and plus skills are doing the rest. Um, I mean, what can you say when you're getting a bunch of extra health? and a bunch of extra damage and total speed um, at one point per each skill. I mean, it's it's a bit of a no-brainer. So at the current level, 25% to all damage and 11% to total speed, and 60% to all health and increased uh, energy regeneration. For one point each, I mean, you just you gotta do it. It's, it's super helpful for this build. Hopping across to the Demolitionist tree, again, top down, uh, Flame Touched. I've currently got it four out of 12. This is one I'm sort of feeling out as I progress. It's helpful because it's uh, an AOE for, for all, um, all the minions, of course, so they all benefit from this skill. Um, the offensive ability in particular is quite good. Um, that's the main reason to get it. The, the fire damage, of course, also really benefits Hellhound, so it's worth having at least a few points in there. I, I might put it to at least six, maybe even. Um, consider maxing depending on, like I said, how, how the build's kind of feeling. I've only got one point in temper, uh, just for the extra bits and bobs that it offers there, especially, you know, the plus armor is quite helpful. And then the rest is just plus, like I said, plus skills from, from other gear. That's, out of the two, um, Flame Touched and Temper, I feel like Flame Touch is more beneficial for this build. Um, hence, only one point in there just to, to kind of have that, those extra benefits. Uh, Blast Shield, full 12 out of 12, is a really, really awesome skill. Uh, you only, quote unquote, have to go to bl uh, below 75% health, which, look, is going to happen fairly often. And the amount of benefits that it offers are pretty insane. The amount of damage absorption, uh, all these extra resistances, and 55% chance to avoid projectiles. Essentially, as soon as you get hit, just about, this will trigger and is going to keep you alive for a good period of time. So, um... Once you kind of get it to 6 out of 12, it becomes really quite useful, and a full 12 out of 12 is really it's pretty buff, pretty tanky, so I definitely recommend cranking that to a full 12 out of 12. 
Now the fire strike line is pretty minimal. The main point of getting fire strike is to anchor raise the dead to it, as we'll discuss in the devotion uh, portion of this video. Uh, so just one point in there for now. One point into explosive strike. One point into searing strike because that's the basically the melee modifier for this uh, skill line. And currently two points in brimstone. I'm finding this to be effective enough to do in, um, sufficient damage to be able to kill enemies and summon you know, extra skeletons and so forth. Again, this is something you could dabble with putting more points in. The, the thing with Fire Strike is it only benefits us, so having just a few points in there and then spending the rest uh, in sort of globally beneficial skills, in my opinion, is a better way to go. But if you're feeling like you're lacking in the DPS department, of course, Fire Strike's there for you to crank more points into. Uh, skipping Static Strike because the uh, lightning damage doesn't really fit the, the vibe of the build, so I've, I've left it out in this instance. Yeah, you'd probably put more points in Brimstone really any of the three brimstone for the aoe is pretty good but then you get weapon damage or main hand damage i should say through fire strike so crank those up as you feel the need but i'm getting away with with this configuration just fine now just one point into each of flashbang and searing light um you know this is a pretty stock skill for any demolitionist um based build really uh, yeah, lots of debuff in the form of confused targets, defensive ability, and the you know, slow and fumble uh, attacks is, is really, really helpful, obviously, to keep us alive if we're in a pinch, and also just help disperse enemies and, and keep our minions um, in a good stead. I don't know, I kind of died on that sentence, <laughs> but you know what I'm trying to say. It, it helps everybody because debuffing the enemies and keeping them dispersed and slow makes us makes our lives easier. Uh, Vindictive Flame, uh, 10 out of 16. This is one probably worth maxing in the end, uh, just to help keep us alive, because uh, we, the player, don't want to be too involved in the killing. It's mostly the pet's job, so this helps us if we ever get into a bit of a pinch. The total speed's really helpful for getting around the battlefield, because we're kind of more jumping around the place and trying to stay out of the direct contact a lot of the time. Um, one point into Ulzwin's Wrath, just because it's there, it's got a chance to knock enemies down and that sort of thing. So it's it's helpful just to, to dump one point in there. But obviously your main focus, you want to be on Vindictive Flame, which is 10 out of 16 at the moment for me. Now it's worth mentioning as well that there are other skills here, and we'll touch on where they come from in the gear portion of the video, which is upcoming. Um, but you'll see I've got extra skills here from uh, gear, effectively. So um, Chaos Strike I have, which is... The equivalent of shadow strike but chaos of course uh, which is a really helpful uh, movement skill uh, for the most part using that just to dash around the battlefield pick off the weaker enemies to allow us to summon more minions um, and in, in some cases get out of a fight by dashing across to uh, some other enemy and get us away from the big bad guy uh, I have got Sadeo's Flame here, which acts as a really nifty debuff and a decent amount of chaos damage. I mostly use it for the debuff portion, 15% uh, reduced targets resistances for one second. It's a really helpful skill to have, um, which comes from the Symbol of Salael uh, component, which again, we'll touch on in a little bit. Uh, Invocation to Chaos, I will show you Invocation to Chaos. Summoning these Void Fiend beasties, they are super, super awesome. <laughs> They're so buff. Uh, this comes from gear as well. Uh, this is our extra pet deliciousness that we bring along for the party. I'm going to screenshot that. It looks awesome. <laughs> these are, you know, extra minions, of course, which we want. We want as many as possible. So uh, these guys are really, really tough. Um, Call of the Beast also comes from gear. This is a pet buff, as well as a buff to us. 50% to all damage and 15% attack speed. Gives our pets 100% to all damage and 30% attack speed. So it's got a reasonably long cooldown on it, 45 seconds, uh, but it's uh, got a 20 second duration. So you can spam it fairly frequently. Of course, just buffs everybody, makes fights much, much easier. Uh, hopping across to my other skill bar, <laughs> I think the only one here is Ancestral Bond, which comes from our Relic, uh, which gives pets a whole bunch of benefits. So elemental damage, crit damage, physical damage, which isn't so relevant. Uh, elemental damage percent, um, increased health regen, increased total speed, and increased retaliation damage, which isn't as important either. But yeah, there's several skills there which are all coming from, from pieces of gear, which is in two sections time. So we'll talk about where they come from in just a little bit. But yeah, there you go. That's all the skills that are being used. We'll touch on uh, attribute selection really quickly. Uh, I have currently got 53 points spent in physique, 
none in cunning and 18 in spirit i have roughly followed my three to one ratio rule which is three in physique to one point in either of cunning or spirit depending on the the uh, base damage of your build of course this being a chaos and elemental damage dealing build uh, spirit is the main driver uh, i haven't needed to invest in cunning for any uh, particular gear types but that may be the case for yourselves that's the uh, you know the other function of of attributes of course is if you are trying to wear a particular piece of gear work towards being able to wear wear that by investing so i may you may have to put a few points in cunning for example is what i'm trying to say but mostly you want to focus on physique that's kind of the grim dawn meta at the moment is that cranking as many points into physique as possible uh, is the best investment of said attributes Alrighty, so let's take a look at the Devotion Tree. Um, at this point in time, I've got 42 out of 50 unlocked, but I've got the remaining points planned out, so we'll talk about that. Um, at the crossroads at this point in time, I've only got a point in uh, purple, which is Ascendant, and that is enabling the use of Empty Throne, which I've just got maxed out for the resistances, both for us and our pets. Really handy defensive skill. Do I actually, actually still need that? I think I do. So, I may have also, and I can't remember to be quite honest with you, but I may have also had investments in uh, green and pink, which uh, correlate to Eldritch and Chaos to unlock some of these constellation options and then ball back out of them once I unlock the constellations because of their um, bonuses, of course. For example, Fiend gives us um, both those uh, affinities, there's the word, <laughs> uh, Eldritch and Chaos. And uh, Jackal's another example of actually just chaos, but you, you get the idea. I, I think I did buy these back once I unlocked some of the constellations to spend elsewhere in other constellations. So um, we'll keep progressing through the tree. Uh, I've also got Hawk, uh, offensive ability, a bit of crit damage and offensive ability. It, it's helpful to have um, predominantly for the extra Eldritch uh, affinity to unlock further things. I'm just working our way across from um, the center out i've got uh nearly full uh, no i do have full points in raven again this is predominantly for the eldritch uh, affinity but it does give us some decent pet buffs uh, for example 15 percent to all damage for us the lightning damage there of course is irrelevant but i wanted to complete the constellation and um, the yeah there's some there's some pet buffs in there it's, it's handy to have that's for sure uh, fully maxed out Bonds of Bismuel through here, uh, a, a range of really good pet buffs, as well as some resistances for us, which are helpful. Um, and the skill Bismuel's Command essentially has a chance to summon an extra, uh, like, Hellhound-ish pet, or an Eldritch Hound, I should say. I've currently got that bound to Flashbang, um, because I don't have anywhere else to bind it to, really, but it's really helpful to have him uh, cranking, or, or her, <laughs> appear from time to time and, and do some nasties. It does decent some decent amount of damage, and it's an extra meat shield to, to lend us a hand. Now, I've got fully uh, maxed out Jackal. Uh, again, this is mostly for the Chaos Affinity, but it's got some helpful buffs there. Similarly for Viper, I just needed certain points in there. Um, to help us get towards uh, the Revenant Constellation, which is one of the keys of this, really, this is the cornerstone of the build. This is where the idea came from. So it's got some decent stuff through the way, uh, but it's predominantly to get Raise the Dead, so 100% chance on enemy death to summon a skeleton. At maxed 15 out of 15, uh, there's a 2.6 second skill recharge, and you can summon five of them. And at max level, they have 18k health, they do decent amounts of physical damage, can slow a target's movement speeds, and do 130% um, to all damage, 90% health, and 90% energy. I believe that's just their base stats once they've got to this point in time. So, really, really awesome little minions. Um, basically, as soon as you can get Raise the Dead, you want to get Fire Strike uh, and bind those two together. Because at first, these skeletons are not very good. They're a bit weak. You can't summon that many. Uh, and they kind of just plonk along, and they do a little bit of stuff, but, <laughs> but they're not super awesome. But once you're able to summon five of them, um, and the amount of damage they do, and once you've worked up your pet buffs through your gear and whatnot, they move faster, they do more damage, and they just cause havoc. So, <laughs> getting that leveled up as soon as possible is really super helpful. Um, I've got fully maxed out Fiend, uh, which gives us fire and chaos buffs, gives our uh, pets some buffs as well, and has a pretty cool skill, Flame Torrent. 
It's essentially a big AoE, uh, which does our main hand damage, or a percentage of it, I should say, as well as fire damage, chaos damage, and burn damage, which I've given to Hellhound. So when he's in the fight, he just drops this thing on the floor, and it does a whole bunch of really nasty stuff. Uh, it suits Hellhound's um, damage types. It looks really cool when he's doing that, um, and it's it does a lot of stuff. So really, really worth having. Um, as we continue to progress across, I've also got Full Slayer's Witchblade. This is more beneficial to us than pets. Does it have any pet help? I don't think it does. So it's mostly chaos damage, um, some offensive ability and so forth. Um, and then Eldritch Fire is the skill on here. So this is more like a debuff. Uh, it does decent amounts of fire and chaos damage. Uh, but as you can see there, it also debuffs movement speed, fire and chaos resistance on our enemies. And what I have that bound to is Salael's Flame, uh, which we touched on, which we touched on just before, comes from uh, a piece of gear. So you can basically spam Salael's Flame, and it's got a decent AOE on it. So um, I'm just basically cranking that out all the time, and it's debuffing enemies, of course. And because we're doing so much fire on Chaos damage, spamming that out there is really helping Hellhound, especially when he's using the Flame Torrent skill. So he's dealing those damage types, and then we're de doing the debuffs. So. Um, that sort of synergizes really, really well with one another. Not to mention that we can throw that debuff out there and then hit them with a Chaos Strike and most likely kill them or take a good chunk of their damage out. So that's a really, really helpful skill to have. And finally, I am working towards finishing uh, Ulzawin's Torch. A bunch of fire damage here. It does Chaos damage too. Good resistances. Um, movement speed even is really cool. And of course, Meteor Shower, which I think I'm going to bind to Flashbang and then move uh, Bismuth's Command, or maybe not even use it. I'll, I'll have to play that by ear. But that's going to be really awesome to have, is extra AoE, just mental amounts of damage, um, and all that good stuff. Does it do weapon damage? I don't think it does. But it does a bunch of fire damage, big old radius, um, and will do a whole bunch of nasties. Uh, I'm just trying to recall the progression of these selections as well. Predominantly was making a beeline for Revenant, which probably would have mean investing um, in either of... Probably would have invested in the Chaos Crossroad, and then gone through Jackal, and then gone through Viper as well, and then Fiend. So it would have been these three first to um, enable... No, it only, needs per, um, it only needs Chaos. So it would have been um, Fiend, and it would have been Jackal first. And then probably, no, it would have been Viper as well. Okay, so it was those three, and that got, got us over to Revenant, and then I would have started making my way through here. So I believe I would have picked up Empty Throne next, and Hawk, and then started working through these other bits and pieces. So you can do those in your own particular order, but for me, getting Revenant um, and Raise the Dead as soon as possible was the main prerogative, because it was the main theme of the build. Alrighty, so now let's take a look at gear. Now this is where it gets really, really interesting. Um, now, I will preface this, and I, I kind of touched on it in the intro, is that this is a pretty gear-dependent... I'll rephrase that. It's an entirely um, gear-dependent build if you want to achieve this exact build. You could probably use the principles of this build and apply it in another way, but to do what I'm showing you here in terms of the exact minions that are getting summoned, um, it's pretty dependent on, well, three pieces of gear, really. So let's take a look at what those are. The first one is our main, our main hand weapon, which is Black Scourge. Um, its benefits include a bunch of Chaos damage, some offensive ability, and plus two to both Bonds of Bismuel and Manipulation. It's also got a, real, a, a, a plethora of really good pet buffs, um, all damage, uh, offensive ability, attack speed, and Chaos resistance, which is really awesome. But then the kicker, and part of this thematic build, is Conjure Black Scourge, which is 30% chance on enemy death to summon up to three Black Scourge. And those are kind of like those Rift Scourge that you see throughout a lot of the Chthonic areas in Grim Dawn. Um, they're basically these little feral dudes that go out there and they just chew on stuff for you. And also when they die, they deal a decent amount of Chaos damage um, and reduce enemy health. So uh, they are really, really cool, really helpful. Again, extra meat shields, they don't take a lot of damage, but they do some pretty cool stuff. And they just look really cool having them around as well. But they, of course, will benefit from all our other pet buffs. Um, so summoning those um, as much as possible is really, really sweet. Now, while on the subject of this weapon, we do have the symbol of Salael component slotted in here. This is what grants us the Salael's flame skill, which we touched on in the skill selection portion. Um, the item, sorry, the component itself does also give us flat and percentage chaos damage, physical damage converted to chaos, and some um, enemy um, enemy energy absorption. Jeez, what a tongue twister. 
So the next item that is deemed compulsory in this build guide uh, is Will of Bismiel, uh, which is a legendary amulet. Uh, a whole bunch of really good buffs here. Uh, resistances, chaos damage, um, plus two to both Bonds of Bismuel and Manipulation again. Pet buffs, uh, pet passive buffs that is, and gives us the skill Invocation to Chaos, which is summoning Void Fiends. Um, we talked about how nasty those dudes are. They do a lot of good fire and chaos damage. They're awesome. They're awesome and you just spam those out as much as possible. They're really, really, really wicked cool. Um, I've got an arcane lens slotted into that, but that's not the compulsory bit. It's just the, the item itself uh, is a key part of this build. So the third piece that I was referring to, and in fact, I may have actually misspoke. Really, it's those two pieces of gear that achieve this core build. So scratch that three pieces of gear thing, but there's a component which is like the third piece, which is pretty much compulsory in my opinion. You might be able to survive without this, but I would dare say you shouldn't. And that is the Riftstone component, which I've got slotted into this offhand um, caster item here. So that's compulsory because it gives us Chaos Strike. And that's our mobility skill as well as one of our main damage dealing skills. So it's super, super duper helpful to have. Um, the movement speed is hugely important for getting around the battlefield, um, as well as all the extra damage that it gives us because that lets us kill stuff much more effectively. Um, letting Black Scourge trigger off our weapon, as well as giving Raise the Dead a chance to trigger Actually, no, it doesn't trigger off Chaos Strike itself, but you can whittle down enemies, of course, with this skill. And then um, if you kill them with Fire Strike, of course, then you go... You, basically, you'll have a chance to summon a lot more minions. Mostly the Black Scourge, but you'll get uh, Skeletons as a benefit of that as well. So that's your third piece of the puzzle, as it were. But in truth, it's two pieces of gear that really form uh, the, the core of this build and what would be deemed compulsory to get all these exact summons um, as you've seen here today. Now we'll go through the other gear as well while we are here, because some of these, they're not compulsory by any stretch, but they're the best I've found so far. You could definitely change most of these out though, depending on what you're able to find or craft, of course. Because speaking of, I did craft this Beast Caller's Cow, uh, which is a legendary helm. Good stuff, including plus two to Bonds of Bismuel, but a whole bunch of uh, pet bonuses there. As well as Call of the Beast, uh, which gives us that Call of the Beast skill I was talking about earlier on, which is just our big pet buff slash buff to ourselves, which is super, super duper helpful. And the, the, the gear just looks really cool as well, in my, in my opinion, but it's a really, really good pet mancer uh, piece of headgear there. Uh, here we've got a Sapphire Band of the Wild, which is not super good, but I'm enjoying the pet buffs that come from it. 15% uh, all damage and 5% attack speed for them. I've got a Mark of Illusions slotted into there, as well as the Rawari Void Seal, uh, which is really pretty good. Uh, gives us flat chaos damage, percentage chaos damage, elemental resistances, and offensive ability, which is pretty helpful to have along for the ride. As for the shoulders, I've got an elite Rawari shoulder guard. I was running the normal Rawari shoulder guard until I got uh, revered by the, uh, for God's sake, brain. These guys, <laughs> by the rovers, crying out loud. So, whoops, I can do this. There we go. So yeah, really, really good. Obviously, plus two to summon Brythorn is not relevant to us, but all the pet buffs there, just you, you can't ignore them. They're so good, so... Um, I've got a silk swatch in there as well, just for extra resistances for ourselves. But yeah, crazy pet bo uh, bonuses, which is really sweet. Similarly, Elite Rorari Cuirass. I was running the normal one until I was able to get this one. Again, for all the pet buffs, a bunch of damage, offensive ability, elemental resistances, super, super good. And in that, I've got slotted a Bindings of Bismil, uh, which gives us some um, percent to all damage and defensive ability, but also helps our pets as well, of course. So, and the next piece across, avoid steel gauntlets, <sighs> near compulsory, <laughs> but not absolutely compulsory. You could definitely find other uh, stuff that's pretty decent. As you can see, this is more for us than our pets, but a plethora of damage um, assistance here. Chaos damage, offensive ability, attack speed, resistance is two, and plus three to Salah's Witchfire. <clears throat> but as you can see, we've also got Witch Blade, sorry, Witch Blaze, 30% chance on critical attack to in an 8 meter radius deal a bunch of fire and chaos damage. Now in there I've got slotted a Consecrated Wrappings, which isn't the best, you pr can probably find a better one, but it gives us some attack speed and chaos damage, which does never go astray. 
in the pants department, I've got Empowers, sorry, Empowered Hermits Leg Guards. These aren't super great. Again, this is one where you could probably find something better yourself. But I mean, it's got some decent stuff on there. I mean, 20, 27% to all damage is not something to sneer at. Uh, an extra 600 health. Offensive and defensive abilities, uh, as well as movement speed is really pretty good, in my opinion. Uh, Anti-Venom Salve slotted into that. Uh, hopping across to the shoes, we've got Golemborn Greaves. Uh, the plus skills on this, uh, main his Bulwark is of course irrelevant, but Temper is pretty handy to have, so that's cool. Uh, some decent uh, defensive buffs on there as well. As well as the Golemborn skill, which is pretty pretty hectic, man. So basically, 25% chance on hit to be a tank. <laughs> so it'll last for 15 seconds, give us 300 extra armor, uh, as well as uh, retaliation to internal trauma, sorry, internal trauma, re trauma retaliation, and 30% reduced attack speed retaliation for two seconds. So helpful stuff to keep us alive, and it will trigger fairly frequently. So that's cool. And on there, I've got Mark of the Traveler, uh, the movement speed and the health regeneration. Oh, the slow resistance is pretty good, but Mark of the Traveler is a good thing to have slotted into your boots at most times. Badge of Mastery for the medal. Again, this is possibly something you could find something better for. I crafted this because I had the recipe. It's just, it's a good all-rounder badge, and I didn't really have a, a better one for like either the pets or myself, at least to this point in time. Again, these are plus skills that are irrelevant, but 19% to all damage, 5% offensive ability, uh, minus requirements to a whole bunch of stuff, and element. Did I say elemental resistances? I don't know if I did, but it's there as well. <laughs> and again, this has got a really cool skill on it. Prowess, 100% chance on enemy death. Uh, to buff the bejesus out of us, <laughs> gives us 100 offensive ability, 50 defensive ability, and 30 health regenerated per second. So that's really cool. It's a 10 second duration and the cooldown is only 15 seconds, so pretty often we're getting that buff and that's super cool. And on there I've got a ward stone um, at the moment just for the extra resistances. The belt is an exalted belt of the wild. Not bad, but probably not the best either. I'm hoping to find something better in the long run. But it's not bad, it gives us resistances and defensive ability and helps our pets out via um, attack speed and all percent to all damage. I've got a dense fur on there for the cold resistance assistance and extra armor. It's, it's not bad for that slot. And finally, the relic. I've got the ancestor relic, which again, plus to skills in shaman, does seem irrelevant, and it is, but everything else is really, really good for pets. So for us, it gives us 20% to all damage and 6% defensive ability, but bonus to all pets, 28% uh, to all damage, percent of defensive ability, and 20% vitality resistance as well as the skill Ancestral Bond, which is really, really sick. Um, so it's essentially a passive skill, and we talked about it in the skills, the skill selection section, this green thingy over here uh, is a bunch of pet deliciousness. Uh, it offers so much, it's really, really helpful to have. So for me, in my opinion, that's the best relic for this build. Um, you can, there's a couple of other pet ones, I think, Bugger, I can't... Savage? Is it the Savage one? Savagery? Oh, bloody, I can't remember. But there's one where you can get another um, permanently summoned pet. I was running that one for a while, but I prefer buffing all the existing pets rather than running another one. That wasn't super effective, to be honest. So, I've gone over to Ancestor, and it's doing really, really awesome things. Alrighty, so now a word on the progression of the build in terms of the best way to level it up, or at least my, my recommended way to level it up. This is where you can probably take some license and um, you know, do it your own way depending on what you want to grab first. But the way I did it was uh, Occultist Mastery first, focusing on leveling up the Hellhound. Uh, it's the same with the Shaman Mastery as well. Uh, getting the big pet and leveling it up as quickly as possible is kind of easy mode uh, for the start of, um, of normal or veteran difficulty because you dump some po early points in there and it's just super tanky and does really hefty damage for you. So that was my primary focus when I started, um, just sort of going up through the Occultist tree uh, until the Hellfire skill for Hellhound. I went up to that portion of the tree and also um, cranked some points into Hellfire uh, just to make the uh, Hellhound as strong as possible um, as early as possible because that makes the early grinding uh, a lot a lot more simple. Uh, as, as I was progressing up the Occultist Mastery, I of, I of course also invested here and there a few points into uh, other skills. You know, I grabbed some points into Slayer's Witchfire when I got that far, into Blood of Dreg when I got that far because obviously we want to be able to heal Hellhound and also dropping one point into Raven and the Raven Heal uh, as I 
progress past those uh, points in the tree. Um, taking it from there, uh, as uh, I leveled up the Revenant constellation to the point where I had raised the dead, I then hopped across to the Demolitionist uh, tree as early as possible, just to put one point in Fire Strike, and then to be able to use um, Raise the Dead ASAP, essentially, which is really, really awesome. Also grabbing Flashbang while you're there. But effectively, once you've gone through leveling up Hellhound, uh, you can then focus a lot more on getting through the Demolitionist Mastery. So grabbing all the skills as you go through. In terms of priority, uh, it depends on how you're feeling with the build. Um, you know, you want to go into Ulswin's Flame if you're feeling you want that total speed and that extra defensive prowess um, by your side. But also grabbing Flame Touched and Temper uh, because that's an aura skill and is uh, very helpful for your pets, of course. So having some points in that and fairly early on. Um, is quite beneficial, but there's, there's not an imperative order there. It's just sort of based on your own feel, but also gunning it for uh, Blast Shield as soon as possible because that skill is really good and really helpful in a defensive capacity. So definitely grab that as soon as you can. You don't necessarily have to max it out ASAP, especially in the earlier difficulties, um, but once you're getting towards, towards sort of late elite, having it maxed or, or near maxed uh, is really, really freaking helpful. Um, so that's really the main things to note, just to summarize that, because I kind of flew through that, is just Hellhound first is the main thing to make your life really easy, grabbing Fire Strike when, once you can to enable Raise the Dead as soon as possible, and then it's sort of just your own sort of feel thing. I said sort of twice there, that was silly, I apologize, but I think you get the general idea. It's not too specific there, uh, but yeah, Occultist first would be the main jive, in my opinion, anyways. Now, as for the playstyle of the build, the keynote, I suppose, is that your main prerogative is not attack first as the player character. This is a build where you are performing a lot more support and debuff and assisting your pets rather than being the main damage source. Like as, as we've discussed, that we're dealing a decent amount of damage, um, but not so much that we're the, the main focal point of, of our um, group of minions, as it were. So, um, primary focus is... Um, debuffing enemies with flashbang uh, and with other skills that we've discussed uh, just to help our pets kill as effectively as possible and of course healing them blood of drig to keep them running keeping them alive uh, is really important and as for uh, us the character attacking uh, you want to focus primarily on the enemy support characters like you know you'll see witch doctors and healers uh, overseers you know similar ones like that the the squishy um, weak but support characters sorry support enemies is where you want to be focusing and failing that just focusing on weaker enemies as well sort of you just trash mobs um, because they're, they're easier to kill and so you'll get more minions quicker so that is what you want to focus your attacks on if you have nothing else to, to hit, of course, jumping in there with Chaos Strike and Wailing on like a hero or boss, presuming it's safe, is totally okay. Um, but we're not a super buff, strong, tanky character. Obviously, we're wielding a caster offhand, not a not a shield. We're not, we have not, we're not dealing in a lot of heavy armor. So it's easy to get overwhelmed if you go into a pack of 20. You know, of 20 enemies, you're just going to get smushed more, more than likely. So that's your pet's job. So stay out of the way, pretty much, and you, you should be just fine because the pets, as long as you support them correctly, will stay alive. Um, really, they're quite strong. So just mostly keeping them, bu keeping them buffed, keeping them alive, summoning by killing weaker enemies, and of course, spamming at the heal with Blood of Drig as, as often as you feel like it um, is really, really beneficial and you shouldn't have to do too much in a direct killing capacity now as as for killing bosses um, of course summoning our void fiends um, is a really good fallback I mean you can do that just throughout your normal killing because the cooldown on on that skill is not very long um, but it's super super beneficial when it comes to um, boss killing because unless they're summoning ads which some of them do um, you're not going to have those extra uh, on death minions coming to assist you so summoning those those extra void fiends as soon as often as possible during a boss fight is really really super awesome but as i just sort of touched on there if you are fighting a uh, a boss that summons minions which you know there are quite a few um not you don't necessarily have to engage in the boss the whole time pick off those minions as soon as they're summoned they should be your targets because that's going to just bring in extra skeletons and extra chthonic uh Chthonic Void, little evil creepy things to... <laughs> the name is just escaping my brain right now, but you know what I mean. So you're going to... The Black Scourge, there you go. The Rift Scourge, whatever they are, they're going to come and fight for you um, as you kill those weak little squishy uh, minions that the boss summon. So that'll make killing them a lot simpler because then everyone piles in, then you throw out your extra buffs, and the boss should die 
pretty damn quick. So that's all I've got for you today, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you found this guide to be beneficial and helpful in your own Grim Dawn endeavors. Hopefully I covered everything in enough detail to help you guys along. If I didn't, if you have any further questions or thoughts or points of discussion, leave them below in the comments. Of course, I will be more than happy to help wherever I can. Otherwise, leave a like, and if you feel so inclined, hitting that subscribe button helps me a lot as well. So, that's all for me, ladies and gents. I hope to see you again soon. My name is Kluger, and you have a great day.